Well, hello and welcome to the show today. Today I want to talk about all different forms of RVs. Now, a lot of people when they think about RVs, they'll think about a trailer or one of those big old motorhomes, but RVs come in all shapes and sizes. And um, they can be kind of judgmental too, so I want to get away from that. I just want to go with the flow of just saying a good RV, any RV is a good RV. I mean any of them. You got to remember that everybody's got different incomes and different kinds of salaries and different types of uh, family situations and stuff. So to get in an RV is pretty much uh, applicable to everybody. It just depends on how much you have to spend, what your uh, skills are in pulling a trailer or a fifth wheel or, or whatever your plans are with the RV. So I'll work from the small size on up. Um, we have what's called the Class Bs, which is basically a van or a van conversion. And they're uh, small and stealthy. That's kind of why people like them. A lot of older folks will use them because they're easy to drive. And they, uh, some folks just want to do day trips, weekend trips, maybe one week trips with a combination of having to sleep in the tour van and maybe a combination of uh, staying in a, in a motel or maybe they're on their ways uh, to a cruise or something. And then there's actually folks, or what they call nomadic folks, um, guys, girls, couples, that actually live full-time and, and work full-time living in a van. Uh, some of them are basic vans and some of them are modified vans and some are what called tour vans. And uh, they can be pretty, pretty slick. Once again, any of these kind of vans or any of these kind of RVs can be uh, found on the internet and I, I urge you to go onto YouTube and type in the type of RV you're interested in and you shouldn't have any trouble finding what you're looking for. The other kinds of RVs that you're probably used to seeing, and uh, a lot of us grew up with them and stuff, were uh, either like little pop-up trailers, uh, which are actually a little trailer-like of a, a unit that opens up and folds out with tent-like uh, sides to them. And uh, I was, <laughs> as growing up, a lot of families use those. Uh, another type of RV that you're probably real familiar with and we grew up with a lot of was uh, good old campers. Uh, they basically mount on the back of a pickup and they came in all shapes and sizes. Um, some of them basic and some of them very elaborate. So you probably know those kind of products pretty well. So probably some of the larger kind of RVs that you're used to is either a trailer that uh, hooks up to a hitch to the back of a pickup. And it doesn't have to be a pickup. It can be like a suburban type of rig. And there's also what's called a fifth wheel. And the biggest differences I know is, is probably space and size. And one of the main things that I've pulled both, I've pulled trailers and I've pulled uh, fifth wheels. I kind of like either one. I feel a little bit more secure with a fifth wheel and I like the way it transfers the weight into the middle of the bed of the truck as opposed to everything pulling off the back hitch. I think the biggest thing that people need to know if they're gonna have trailers, especially the bigger they get, make sure you have what's called uh, uh, tow bars to uh, help stabilize the, uh, the trailer from swaying back and forth. I think once you get one of those installed, you'll feel pretty comfortable with a good old trailer like that. Fifth wheels, they tend to, once you put them right under um, their mount and they're right in the middle of the truck, they really feel like part of your truck. So I kind of per prefer probably the fifth wheel. Then we kind of move up to uh, uh, what they call a Class C. And a Class C is, you probably, if you didn't know them very well, you just call that a motorhome. But a Class C, to me, looks like a motorhome with a front end of a van. Um, they're uh, uh, 
a little easier to drive. I think, I haven't got to drive one of those, but I think it'd feel kind of bulky to me because of the way the driver's seat um, in the driver area is actually skinnier than the body of the, of the uh, RV itself. And, um, but a lot of people really like them and they are uh, um, kind of a good mid-size kind of RV, but they can get pretty bulky and pretty uh, elaborate. So uh, there's a lot of folks that travel with those and also live full-time in those. And then last but not least, um, there's the good old, what they call Class A. Um, to keep it in layman's terms, um, they look like a bus. <laughs> so, a very nice bus. And they tend to be your most high-tech RVs. Uh, they will probably hear the terminology gas or diesel pushers. Um, you typically would see a Class A, their engine in the back would be a diesel. <clears throat> And then uh, the, uh, you can kind of see if they have a grill in the front, it will typically be a gas unit. So um, I think a lot of folks really have to analyze what kind of RVing they're going to do when they go to decide whether they want gas or diesel. One of the latest reports I've heard is there's a couple called um, that are a group called Gone with the Winds. They uh, actually demo um, RVs for Fleetwood and one year they had a diesel pusher and this year they have a gas and they really had a chance to give us some reports about the gas because uh, they're actually taking they took a trip up to Alaska and if you go to Gone with the Winds website you'll uh, see that they did a analysis on their gas mileage and it was actually lower than a diesel pusher and so uh, they're kind of a uh, I mean, I got to give them credit because they're actually driving a unit that's being supported by Fleetwood and basically given to them. And yet they're still being very honest about the reports. And they reported uh, they were pretty disappointed with the gas mileage of a gas engine as opposed to their old diesel pusher. So now that we uh, actually covered a few of those units, uh, let's talk about the other aspect. Do you get one that's new or used? Uh, that's what's kind of neat about the RV industry is if you want an RV and it, you either make a lot of income or you don't make a lot of income, there's an RV out there for everybody, uh, whether new or used. Um, what's really neat I've noticed with used RVs is you can get a unit that maybe it's 10 or 15 years old and only have 20,000 miles on it because uh, a lot of people don't drive a RV around a, you know a lot so the mileage is usually pretty low um, so it really comes down to how was the RV used and how well was it kept up I basically would say that an RV is just like a boat um, if you're not using them they're actually <laughs> falling apart so an RV that's actually being used once in a while means that the owner most likely has been uh, maintaining it uh, the other thing good about a used RV is like um, just like cars or anything else you buy a new uh, RV and there's still hundreds of dollars worth of things that you need to add to it what's nice about buying a used one is usually the owner of that unit has already put that stuff in Little things like TV antennas or maybe uh, uh, satellite dishes or uh, special radios or things like that. Maybe the upgraded uh, upgraded the television sets and stuff. So there's some real benefits to buying used. Of course, you got to worry about breakdown. The big benefit to a new rig is warranties, of course. Um, and I guess the other thing, and, I, and I'll talk from my experience, is I've had trailers, fifth wheels, and 40-foot Fleetwood um, Discovery motorhome. And I had to use warranties on all of them. And I'm sure glad I had it. Now, right now, um, in, in this day and age, Sherry and I are using a dually truck, 
And we have a fifth wheel. It's a Montana fifth wheel. We have a 3625RE, which is a rear entertainment, which means uh, that's pretty much how they identify them. <coughs> but um, what was nice is we bought that used. It was only like eight months old. And someone bought it and they uh, played around with it and decided they wanted a bigger one. And it was the model we really wanted. And it saved us $20,000 just because someone else bought it ahead of us. And it was in perfect condition, and they upgraded things in it that we would have had to add on if we bought it new. So uh, the thing we did that is we bought that at a place called Camping World, if you're familiar with that. And you can get what's called an extended warranty um, through, I think ours is through Good Sam, to help uh, uh, protect it. And already. Uh, after a year and a half, we have a few items that we're having replaced. Uh, uh, AC unit went out, one of our jacks was acting up, and we have a generator. <clears throat> All three items are going to be covered on the uh, extended warranty. I can't tell you exactly how much. I'll find out later. That's actually right in the middle of that. So, But the fact that we have extended warranty was uh, um, already sounds like it's paid for itself. So those are the things to consider when you're buying or wanting to have your own RV. And of course I would have to start saying that you probably need to kind of define what kind of RV person you would be. Are you the RV kind of person that would be using your RV once in a while? Will you be using uh, state and national parks a lot? Those are big issues. Are you the uh, kind of RVer that probably want hookups all the time so you always have water and, and septic and then last but not least are you the kind of person that likes to boondock maybe you don't want to be so tied into uh, society and you want to get off the grid for a while well if you do that then you're going to have to start considering what kind of rig how much water you can store how much sewage you can hold and the biggest thing how much power can you create so one of the other big things you want to start paying attention to is what kind of power units are in these uh, rigs whether um, you're just happy with the good old just battery and and drive every day type of thing and uh, that should be just fine or are you going to be off the grid a little bit and you need a few batteries and then if you're going to be off the grid a lot do you want something to generate power like do you want a generator and now the big thing is <laughs> solar Solar is getting really big on RVs nowadays. Uh, in fact, uh, Sherry and I just had solar added to our fifth wheel. And you can do it eh, dozens of ways uh, to do solar. And that will be a whole other subject in this show. Today we're just kind of talking about the general RV and what we're up to here. And, and we're going to kind of uh, keep urging people as they're listening to give us comments or what they'd like to talk about. Um, and then we'll also be setting up interviews. Um, uh, I think one of the first interviews I'd like to do is with a trans, uh, transport company. A lot of people don't know that there's transport companies out there that uh, some folks, uh, and then here's another answer to your question. Maybe you want a, a fifth wheel or maybe you want a trailer, but you don't own a truck. That's okay. No big deal and depending on how you want to use your rig but you know they have what's called transport companies now <clears throat> and basically it's uh, somebody owns a truck basically with hitches on it that is uh, a company with insurance and um, they will transport your RV to the location you want either short runs or they can do cross country it's all depends on how much you're willing to spend and then and how big a unit it is so um, I think it'd be really interesting to get an interview in with one of those people because they, they they can tell some really good stories because I mean when they transport stuff it's not just new units or stuff sometimes they're moving things have been sitting around for 30 years and they fall apart on them and they're not sure if they're street legal and the whole works so they have some real interesting stories and I thought it'd be fascinating to uh, see if we can get one to do an interview with so I don't want to let this first broadcast get too long, but I just kind of wanted to do an overview on RVs and we can pretty much talk about all of them. The big thing is we want to start getting feedback from you. So 
please send us email. Uh, you can always contact me at rob at rvtalkradio.com. That email again is rob, R-O-B, at talkradio, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> rvtalkradio.com. And if you have some comments, uh, some ideas, uh, subjects you want to talk about, please bring them forth to us. Um, common sense feedback um, is the kind of feedback we like. Um, anything that's constructive that we could do to make our show even better. So I'm going to wrap it up here. I want to thank you very much for joining us on our first, ep- uh, second episode, actually. And we'll have, I'm uh, not sure what our schedule is going to be, but I think we'll definitely be a weekly, the um, maybe twice a week with a show. And um, once again, let us know what you'd like to do. So thanks again for listening to RV Talk Radio and have a great day. And my question to you is, what are you waiting for? (laughs) Bye now.